I'm gonna dive deep into the topic of cutting weight for wrestling, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better athlete, you wanna be more coordinated, you wanna get stronger, you wanna have more endurance, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So the sport of wrestling, especially in the United States, is well known for having very, very hard cuts. We've seen wrestlers even die on this scale. We've seen wrestlers cut 20 to 30 pounds in a matter of a week. We've heard the horror stories and we've constantly had to deal with this, especially in the sport of wrestling, on what's the best way to go about cutting weight and why are we even cutting weight to begin with? And that starts with this misconception that if we cut 20 pounds, we're gonna be better at that lighter weight class. And oftentimes coaches and wrestlers tend to forget there's a serious diminishment on performance when a wrestler is cutting three to five percent their performance won't diminish too much but science has shown us that after that three to five percent of weight cut there's a huge performance drop off in regards to strength in regards to endurance in regards to coordination and so we still continue to see these huge weight cuts and i personally have even been affected by this aspect of cutting weight where my brother who wrestled a year at Penn State when he was in high school he had cut so much weight leaving football season cutting down from 215 pounds down to 171 pounds during wrestling season his cut was so horrible he had a seizure on the mat and that was the point of no return for me where I decided I was going to be a heavyweight and I was going to dig deep into this topic of why in the culture of wrestling, we continue to push these hard weight cuts when we know from that science-based perspective, it doesn't really pay off. So what we've done today is we put together five of the key factors that are gonna help you understand the importance of how you should cut weight and when you should stop at certain points. So coming at that number five spot, we're gonna start off right off the bat with know how your body reacts to a good night's sleep, know how your body reacts to a good, strong practice. So if you're getting into practice and you're fully hydrated and you're following a practical nutritional plan, this means that you're eating well, you're getting optimal amounts of protein, you're getting close to a gram of protein per pound of body weight, you're eating plenty of carbs so that you're fully hydrated and your muscles are filled with glycogen so that you can perform as optimally as possible when you're on the mat. So when you're eating well and when you're cutting weight, now when you get into practice, you've got to recognize, okay, if I'm eating enough protein, I'm eating enough carbs, maybe I cut my fat a little bit, how does my body lose weight throughout that practice? How much weight am I gonna lose when I go to bed? So now, because you're eating a little bit better, your sleep quality is going to improve dramatically. And if your sleep quality is improving, you're probably gonna lose a little bit more weight because you're gonna be able to recover a little bit more effectively. So we can see with athletes, specifically wrestlers, who go to bed, let's say they go to bed at 70 kilos or 155 pounds, overnight they might wake up that next morning at 153 or 152 and a half because they're healthy and their body's recovering very very well when we're cutting too hard we'll start to see wrestlers barely lose any weight overnight and that's because they're not nutritionally nourished so we've got to pay attention to how does your body respond to sleep how is your body responding to practice again if we talk about being nutritionally nourished, being fully hydrated. You might go through practice and you might lose five pounds when you're in practice and you still feel okay. And that's something that you can utilize later on when you're trying to weigh in at that big tournament, at that postseason competition, whatever it is that you're competing in. Coming in at that number four spot, we've gotta make sure that we're planning ahead. A lot of wrestlers will wait till the last minute to drop weight, but if we can start to take that step back. Maybe we're eight weeks out from that big competition and we start to lose about a pound a week. So now we're eight weeks out. Let's say we lose a pound, a pound and a half a week. 
Now we're down 10 pounds, but it's much more subtle. And now your body can adapt much quicker. When you're losing eight to 10 pounds rapidly, your body doesn't adapt. And that's when you start to see that drop off in performance. So it's important that we gauge, that coaches gauge this and the wrestlers gauge this based off of their energy, based off of what they're doing in the weight room, based off their power output. Maybe you can test your vertical jump on a regular basis. You can test your, your five rep bench press, your pull-ups for, for a max out. Whatever it is, you can start to gauge where that drop off happens. And typically a very good rule of thumb is about 3% is where you're gonna start to see a very, very significant drop off in your body weight. So if we're planning ahead and we're sitting there saying, hey, we've got a big competition in eight to 10 weeks, or the season's starting in eight to 10 weeks, let's start to slowly drop a little bit of weight. Let's try and come up with that plan of that drop off. Let's test our vertical jump twice a week. Let's test our 15 rep pull-ups twice a week, whatever it might be. Now you've got that plan. Now you're putting into place how you're going to operate from a nutritional perspective. And one of the biggest things that I don't understand in the culture of wrestling is we know how taxing the sport is. We know it beats us up from an anaerobic perspective, from an aerobic perspective. We know that it's extremely challenging. You've gotta be really strong, you've gotta be really explosive. You've gotta have really good endurance. And then we starve our wrestlers and that's just absolutely mind boggling and it's archaic. So try to have these things factored in. How are you gonna plan ahead? How are you gonna gauge that performance drop off? and that's gonna help you tremendously as you work through the season. That third key aspect, and this is a little bit more aligned with mentality, is recognize that cutting weight doesn't mean better results. So oftentimes coaches will say, well, if we're cutting from you know, 152 down to 138, you're gonna have the strength of a 152 pounder down at 138 and you're gonna dominate. But what if there's a dude at 138 who walks around at 141 and he's fully nourished and he's still lifting weights regularly he's still wrestling as hard as he possibly can and then you start to cut that weight really really hard you start to be less focused you can't take your creatine you're not eating as much protein you have no carbs in your body you're eating almost no fat now you're losing those trace minerals now you're losing those vitamins and now you're not performing really well because you're starved so your performance is going to be horrible when you're making that drastic cut. Meanwhile, the dude who's down at 138 and he's walking around at 141, he's fat, he's happy, he's eating well, he's focused during practice, he's getting better practice reps, and every time he's taking his shot, or he's working on his, on his scrambles, or he's working on his technique, and he's working in the weight room, improving that strength, improving that power output, he's gonna dominate you because he's in a better situation from that nutritional perspective. And that's the key factor here, is that cutting weight doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have better results. You've gotta gauge where that fine line is gonna be, and you've gotta move forward and recognize maybe dropping from 170 to 160 is a little bit too hard, or dropping from 182 to 170 is a little bit too difficult. Stay at 182, try and bulk up, eat a lot, and make sure that your practice reps are optimized over and over again. Coming at that number two spot, we've got to plan refeeds. And so what does that mean? If we're on a caloric deficit, let's say we're walking around at 195 and we do want to drop down to 182. So, you know, maybe you're a light 195 pounder. You're walking around at 192 pounds. You get a two pound allowance at 182. So now it's 184 and you think you can make that cut pretty easily. It's about three to 4% of your body weight. And if you start to calorically cut and create a deficit, you think you can make it without having any, tr any negative impact on your performance. So one of the things that we recommend is sitting there and saying, all right, for four days, we're gonna go on a caloric deficit. We might be 400, 450 calories down. Okay, so you might not be eating as many carbs. You might not be eating as, as much protein as you typically would. And during those four days, the first two days, you're gonna feel pretty decent. Now that day three, day four, you might not feel as strong, you might not feel as vibrant, and you might start to see a little bit of a drop off. What I recommend is on that fifth day, and maybe this is a day that 
you're, you could be planning after weigh-ins you could do this or after you have a tough tournament and then that night in the next 36 hours, you plan a refeed. So you add in those 500 calories that you had been cutting and then I even recommend adding in another 200 calories. So for about 36 hours, you're eating, you have, you have this refeed and your body adapts very well, it feels really good and then the next day after those 36 hours, you go back into that calorie deficit. What this does is it helps rejuvenate your body, you start to feel really good, it helps you from a recovery perspective but it also helps you mentally. But the key factor, especially with high school wrestlers, is you've got to do it properly. You've got to buy into the system. You can't starve all week and then plow down Lucky Charms and cheeseburgers. You've got to be precise. If you want to be a state champion and you want to go to the NCAA level and you want to be an NCAA All-American, you have to focus on your nutrition properly because if you do it right, that could be the difference between you standing on top of the podium or you standing on the sideline bawling your eyes out because you just got beat because you didn't cut properly. Before we get to that number one factor in weight cuts, if you want help cutting weight, you can click on the link down below and we have a nutritional program that's gonna help you cut weight specifically. If you want help with in-season wrestling training, we've got a whole program that we've designed. You can click on that link down below, head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up that in-season strength training program. Now that number one key factor that every wrestler screws up at some point in their career is you've got to have a way in plan. What does that mean? That means that if you're cutting, let's say you're cutting six, seven, eight pounds and, and you've had a decent cut, maybe it's a little hard towards the end, but you weigh in, you make weight. A lot of wrestlers, you know, if you're in the international style, you've got to weigh in in your singlet, but in high school, you can weigh in in, in spandex and shorts and then you weigh in and you might be wrestling within an hour, or an hour and a half but a lot of wrestlers make this mistake. They'll gorge themselves. They'll eat junk food. They'll, they'll sit there and eat food that they're not used to eating and then they feel all bloated, they feel sluggish. And a lot of wrestlers eat so much, they end up throwing up after their first match because they haven't been used to eating that much food. So you've got to focus on what kind of carbs are you going to be eating? Are you going to be eating oatmeal? Are you going to be eating rice? What kind of protein are you gonna be take, taking in? Are you gonna have some chicken? Are you gonna have some whey protein? Maybe you have a little bit of, of a nut butter, or almond butter, or something along those lines to fill yourself up. You have some nice fats like palm oil or coconut oil. Maybe you put some butter on toast, anything along those lines, but have a plan on what you're gonna be doing. Make sure that you're fully hydrated and you're getting those electrolytes after your weigh-ins, but you're not drinking so much that you're super bloated. So I would recommend planning out, have some rice, have some nice drinks that you can put in, some electrolytes so that you can feel a little bit better and make sure you're not overeating. I would even recommend that you have a plan if you're in a tournament. Between matches, you should always eat a little bit of something to help you have a little bit more energy in between those key matches so that if you're going into the semifinals or you're going into the finals, you feel nourished, you feel strong, you've got plenty of energy and you can dominate your opponent. So if you want any more information about wrestling-based training, you can head over to garagestrength.com. You can click on the link down below in the description and you can pick up our in-season wrestling program. If you want more videos about wrestling, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.